Sir, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. I want to lay it out at the beginning that this is your opportunity to sell. We normally don't grant opportunities to sell because we say advertise, but this is free time for you. We're here to talk about your issues. The central message that the DA is taking to the people of South Africa ahead of these elections. Yeah. Yeah, thank you once more uh, for the opportunity given to us. The Democratic Alliance is offering, I mean, number of, uh, you know, uh, commitments to the vo I mean to the voters you know based on our manifesto uh, we want to ensure that we build one South Africa for all uh, the one South Africa for all uh, you know premised on the basis that uh, the values which you want people to adhere to it's a value which talks about freedom that people must exercise the freedom which they have uh, like going to these elections we are saying uh, you know exercise your right by going and vote for the DA and we also believe that the IEC will conduct these elections in a fair way, uh, that elections are going to be free uh, and fair. And that is the fairness part which the DA also champions, that right. uh, we need to ensure that there's fairness. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, we believe that the DA is the only diverse party in South Africa where we accommodate uh, you know, everyone, you know, uh, regardless of race, gender. Uh, you know, we make sure that uh, we are accommodative, and that's why we want to build South I mean, one South Africa for all. Yeah. And we believe that in this country, we need to create more opportunities so that people can live the type of life they want to live. Yeah. And this is basically, these are the values which the DA, uh, I mean, are basing uh, all the commitments, election commitments on. Yeah. Obvious part of what we're looking at is we've got high unemployment rate in our country. Yeah. The economy is not growing at the level which uh, is creating more opportunities, especially for young people. Yeah. And we are saying part of our offer is to ensure that we deal with unemployment rate uh, while doing that, you need also to fight corruption yeah. because we realize that corruption is actually depriving, I mean, mostly the poor people opportunity for them to succeed. Yeah. And uh, that's why we're saying corruption is one thing which we're going to target I while we're creating jobs. I want us to come back and talk about uh, the offers that you have in terms of reducing unemployment. But I wanted to ask you, some people would question your assertion that you want to build a South Africa for all when you have got uh, the worst uh, unequal society in the world. Wouldn't uh, who did not be uh, uh, correct to suggest that if you have such unequalness, you cannot be then saying, let's make this thing uh, uh, work for everyone when you have got one section that is being unfairly uh, treated, if you like, by the economic environment. That's why when we talk about building one South Africa for all, it's when we create opportunities for everyone. And in this instance, obvious people who are deprived or who are outside yeah. are the ones which you need to target so that they become insiders, they become players. Because if they are unemployed, they will remain outside. But then if we create job opportunities for them, yeah. grow the economy, yeah. work with also those who have and say, can you create conducive environment so that those who don't have can be participant. And that is why we're aiming that... Uh, you know, when we, we get all these people together, yeah. that is where we're going to bring And you're sure that people. when you talk to those that have and you say to them, please help those that you don't have, they will listen to you? Oh, they do. I mean, people are always open, uh, you know, for leadership. What we don't have is, uh, you know, it's bold leadership which shows the vision. Ah. So that's why when we're saying, let's build one South Africa for all, yeah. it's bringing all communities together regardless of whether they are rich or they are poor. Yeah. Because if you, you, you bridge that gap, you know, that's where when you deal with inequality, yeah. you create a competitive environment okay. where those who are entering the market can compete with those already there. Okay. And because you're allowing conducive environment, yeah. it becomes easy. So what we've been doing is we actually went to the streets and we spoke to the voters that are going to be making a decision in these elections and we're asking them the issues that they want addressed. Let's take a listen to the first one. I was so excited, I was so happy. I thought that for the first time in my life, I'm going to have a say in the running of the government. Whatever I'm going to uh, talk is going to be taken into consideration. These people that you are going to elect is like uh, hiring someone to work for you. I felt like a boss the first time in my life that whoever is working is going to work for me. It's going to take orders. It's going to He's going to listen to me. He's going to make my life better than before. But it hasn't gone that way. It has gone horribly wrong. It's like driving a car and all of a sudden two wheels just go out at the same time. 
that is a freak accident that we find ourselves today with a government that doesn't know whether they're going or they're coming, with the people that think that they can just act with impunity. No one can touch them. No one can, people can just take money and no one can be arrested. It's commission after commission. How much are they spending on those commission instead of just taking the law enforcement to do their job? It sounds like he's talking to you. I mean, we, I, <laughs> I, I agree with the sentiment which the, I mean, the voter is talking about, that, yeah. uh, you know, we've got people who are committed to loot, and they're looting resources which are supposed to be benefiting people. And what we've seen, no consequences. I mean, you, you, I mean, I, before I came here, I'm just from the Zondo Commission, a state of, uh, I mean, the state capture inquiry. Yeah. yeah. I just, I mean, just a shock of my life, you know, you know, when you look at the state, I mean, security. Yeah. For example, you remember we used to have scorpions. Yes. You know, scorpions was disbanded after the 94% convictions rate. And what do they, wh what do they, estab I mean, uh, replace it with? And what is that we have currently? The hawk. Between 2013 uh, and 2018, you know, SIU has referred 686 cases. Uh -huh. And could you imagine out of those 686 cases, what, what are the convictions? Now? Zero. Oh. So you, you're replacing something which was working yeah. with something which is not working. Yeah. And that's why we also sh I mean share the same sentiment that it's because people want to protect the looters. You know, corrupt people are protecting themselves by yeah. ensuring that they dissolve what is working. Yeah. And that is why the DA is prioritizing corruption as an I mean, enemy number one, that we're going to get uh, I mean, into the bottom of why people are stealing money which is supposed to benefit the public. Right. And they must be able to pay back that money so that that money have to, I mean, service the public, which is actually waiting for. Yeah. So rather than, I mean, benefiting themselves. And Absolutely. that is why we want this uh, state institution to, fa to function. Yeah. By making sure that we professionalize people who get employed there. Yeah. So that it's not only friends who go there to okay. protect them amongst, them amongst right. themselves. Let's take a listen to another issue again. For now, the problem is, uh, is running with the old people and everything. The new staff, the new government like <coughs> EFF, the one that will will take this South Africa and then we'll, we'll see the moving forward of South Africa. My issue is jobs. People are not working and it causes more corruption in the, in the townships or where I stay. It causes more corruption and crime. Okay, so he talks about uh, corruption issues that you raised before you knew that those were issues that they were going to come up with. He also speaks about uh, jobs. And I challenged you at the beginning that I was going to come back and talk about the issue of jobs. Your solution to the jobs issue. Yeah. As, I mean, the good thing about this, the DA has been in government uh, in a number of municipalities in the country and also in Western Cape. So whatever we're actually making as commitments to South Africans is yeah. something which we already, I mean, tried and tested. If you look at uh, this province, uh, you know, the longest municipalities the DA has been in charge, it's Midval. If you look at the, you compare Midval with all the other municipalities in the province or even in the country, yeah. the unemployment rate is the lowest. Uh, it's because we are committing ourselves and we serve people with pride. Some would and say that it's a small thing, so you're able to make change quicker. You start with small. You compare that small municipality with other small municipalities at the same level. And that is where you start, start to notice the difference. But equally, look at the Johannesburg, city of Johannesburg since the DA took over. So when we talk about the success of this province, you look at the number of jobs which are created in the city of Johannesburg, number of jobs which are created in the city of Tshwane. So that is an indication that when the DA is in charge, where we govern, we govern better, and yeah. we attract investors, and we make sure that you know, small businesses actually succeed. Because we believe that when you allow small businesses to operate, you give them space to create job opportunities. So instead of what we've observed in the, you know, other municipalities and even in the province led by the ANC, yeah. you realize that you know, your service providers, they don't get paid within 21 days or within 30 days, mm -hmm. despite the fact that you've got treasury regulations which uh, you know, oblige them to do so, but yeah. they don't. They yeah. then put them out of business. When you do that, you're actually destroying opportunities. Yeah. And that is why we're saying, including corruption, yeah. people will sit on, I mean, on top of the invoices waiting for someone to say, if you release this invoice, yeah. you must give me something. Yeah. And that is where corruption comes Absolutely. in. So we are saying, when you set up standards, pay your service provider within 21 days, yeah. you are actually boosting your entrepreneurs and you will grow your small businesses. Kume, your time is up. Thank you for coming in today. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's uh, Kume Ramalifo. He is the uh, Regional Democratic Alliance Housing South Chairman.